You're listening to the Pool Proof Wisdom Podcast, where we bring our authentic selves, refuse to raise grown folks, and share wisdom you can use. With your host, Charles K. Poole. Hello, good people. Now, if you're a fan of this podcast or even listened just once, you know that I believe in self-help and finding a way to ensure it through a variety of means. Now, we've talked about personal journeys, understanding how trauma makes it necessary to avoid asking what's wrong with you when the appropriate question is what happened to you, and spoken with mental health and therapy professionals and about why mental health is important. As I said, I believe in self-help. Today, the topic also involves self-help, but focuses on an area that, depending on your experience, may or may not be one you're familiar or comfortable with. I'm talking about hypnotherapy. Here's the thing. For a lot of people, the very word conjures up images of someone swinging a pocket watch in their face telling them, you're getting very sleepy. Now, while the term hypnosis actually comes from the Greek word hypnos, which means sleep, the comparisons really should stop there. Hypnotherapists use exercises that bring about deep relaxation and an altered state of consciousness, also known as a trance. A person in a deeply focused state is unusually responsive to an idea or image. But this does not mean that a hypnotist can control a person's mind and free will. So stop worrying about walking around like you're a zombie. On the contrary, hypnosis can teach people how to master their own states of awareness. By doing so, they can affect their own bodily functions and psychological responses. Unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation about what hypnotherapy is, how it works, and what it can and cannot do. So, today, we're going to find out. Kim Yurkovich is a clinical hypnotherapist dedicated to collaborating with people to guide them to identify the root cause of issues they're experiencing today, to resolve them and move forward living a happier, peaceful, and more abundant life. Her practice is based on trust. Kim says she's transparent in her communications and empathetic in her approach when collaborating with her clients, which allows her to establish that trust quickly. Kim is dedicated to helping solve all kinds of problems, and she partners with each client to dig into their issues and through hypnotherapy, work with the subconscious mind to help eliminate negative emotions and provide positive suggestions designed to empower individuals to move forward free of the burdens they've carried with them, in many instances, for years. Driven by a passion for helping others since beginning her career when she worked in the psychology field, Kim has witnessed firsthand the effects stress, anxiety, addictions, and limiting beliefs can have on people, causing ongoing and chronic mental and physical health problems. And tapping into her understanding of behavior and messaging after working in a communications and public relations career for 25 years, Kim possesses a clear set of insights into human behavior and emotions that she employed when she became a clinical hypnotherapist. Having struggled herself, she says, helped her discover the power of hypnotherapy in her own life, working with a hypnotherapist herself to overcome limiting beliefs and feelings of not being enough so that she could live a happier, more abundant life. Seeing the transformation in her life personally led to the study of hypnotherapy and her decision to take all she has learned and become a practitioner herself. Using a variety of hypnotherapy techniques customized to address each individual's unique needs, Kim helps people release negative emotions that hold them back and works with them to replace those limiting beliefs with the tools they need to live more abundantly. While she provides services to everyone, she has a particular interest in the unique challenges faced and shared among women. 
Now, Dr. Andrew Weil, founder and director of the Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine at the University of Arizona and a world-renowned leader and pioneer in the field of integrative medicine, which describes a healing-oriented approach to health care which encompasses the body, mind, and spirit, has said of hypnotherapy, quote, in general, I believe that no condition is out of bounds for trying hypnotherapy on, end quote. So, let's have a conversation about hypnotherapy facts and fictions that will, by the time we are done, help us all understand what hypnosis is and what it isn't. Good morning, Kim. Welcome to the podcast, and thank you for joining me. Hey, Charles. So great to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. You're looking pretty good this morning, despite the fact I understand it's cold as hell there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's really cold here. <laughs> but well, thank you. Yeah, you're not letting it get you down, so that's a good sign. That's right. That's right. It's I can I can feel the rainbow coming of warmth. I can feel that we're almost to spring. How interesting is it that the old groundhog predicted exactly at the moment that there were actually six weeks of winter left that there would be six more weeks of winter? Go figure. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that, that groundhog is amazing. Yeah, exactly. I got to get a job <laughs> like that. So, Kim, I want to talk to you this morning because back when I initially saw you make your announcement about the fact that you were going to be getting into this field and opening up your own practice, in my head, and this is what's interesting about relationships, you and I kind of know each other in general, but we weren't like necessarily working in the same places at the same time, but we know each other. And I immediately pegged in my head, hmm, that's an interesting subject. And I'm a big fan of self-help. And I believe that whatever form of therapy you can access to gain that health, you should do it. So I immediately pegged away then, I'm going to reach out to Kim and talk to her. And the reason I find it so compelling is because most people misunderstand what is meant when they hear the word hypnotherapy or hypnosis. So why don't we just jump in by you giving your definition of what it is? Right. Great. Okay. Um, It's a great question. And there's so there's a lot of Hollywood behind what people think about (laughs) it. So it's great to be able to talk with you and and kind of bring some clarity to to um, clinical hypnotherapy. So what uh, the way I like to to look at it, because there, you know, you really there are a million definitions of it. It's like, what is love? You can, you know, Um, but the way I look at it is it's really a um, very, very focused um, state of mind. Okay, so it's it's you're very focused. You're very, you're concentrating. And the reason I look at it that way, and I I guess a good comparison, Charles, is if you've ever daydreamed or if you've ever um, driven somewhere that you've driven a million times and parked your car and not really remembered the journey, right? Mm -hmm. Or watched a movie or read a book and someone asked you a question, you didn't hear anything they said to you because you're so focused. That is really sort of the state of hypnosis. You're Mm -hmm. just in a very focused um, state of mind. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, in a world where everyone's thoughts and 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 you know considerations seem to be so broken up these days, I don't think a lot of people understand that those simple indicators like you've just referenced are exactly that. I'm so glad you said it because there are times when I just drift off. I'm a astrologically I'm known as a Pisces, so we're known to be daydreamers. But I find that it serves me very well because I'm always open to the imagination. And I do consider that part of, you know, individual spiritual growth. So speak to me a little bit about people who take for granted that these things are meaningless versus actually have meaning in their lives. Right. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's actually very extraordinarily meaningful because what you do in hypnotherapy is you work with the subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the subconscious mind is basically running the show of your life, right? Mm -hmm. It's where all your emotions, all your behaviors, all your beliefs about yourself, it's where every memory you've ever had since your first breath is stored, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you and I are having a conscious conversation right right now. Your Mm -hmm. brain is filtering in, you're gonna respond back. It is considering what you're considering what you're gonna say. Mm -hmm. So working at the subconscious level gets your ego and, and all your objections and things like that out of the way. And it opens you up to being able to think more transformatively with regards to whatever 
whatever your goal is, if mm -hmm. you're lacking self-confidence, if you have insomnia, if mm -hmm. you're in pain, um, if you uh, have an addiction, if right. you have limiting beliefs about yourself, if you feel stuck, mm -hmm. all of those things are where you work at the subconscious level with a person and help them and guide them to being able to move forward um, more abundantly mm -hmm. um, with more, with, you know, sort of a lighter, more confident, um, self-actualized existence, so to mm -hmm. speak. Well, there's a lot of accountability there because I don't think necessarily, and I'm not speaking about everyone, but I do know a lot of people who think that things happen to them and they have no control over how yeah. they are going to deal with it. Everything happens to them. But what you're proposing is that this ability to tap into that unconscious mind shows that we have more power than we are even aware of and can access it. Speak to me about that. Yes, it's absolutely true because, you know, um, your emotions create your beliefs about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Your beliefs create your actions, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So think, think about how powerful that is. Mm -hmm. The only thing you actually really can control mm -hmm is are your thoughts mm -hmm. like people think you know it, especially you know all the negativity and negative self-talk and what that does to a person um you know it it, it does take them down that path a path mm -hmm. of negativity leads to more negativity mm -hmm. and so it's it's realizing that you you do have the ability the one thing you actually can do mm -hmm. is work to control your thoughts and your self-belief mm -hmm. and and hypnotherapy can help guide you in that process with regards to opening you to um you know being more confident and handling your stress in a different way or letting go of, of emotions that don't serve you that kind of thing mm -hmm. and when you think of it in that context i think that scares people because then yeah. <laughs> if i can do this and then you're not doing it, what is that saying about you? And as a therapist, what is your response to that perhaps innate fear that if I have the power to do this and I'm not doing it, it means there's something, quote, wrong with me, unquote. Right, right. And that's an excellent question. I think fear, fear is like, it's either, you you know, fear is a big driver mm -hmm. that holds us back in life, mm -hmm. um, even if we're not aware of it. But it's funny because people humans will hold on to their feelings. They mm -hmm. will hold on to whatever doesn't serve them so tightly right. and they don't even realize they're doing it, frankly, right. frankly, you know, it's not, it's just so much a part of them mm. that, you know, just not wanting to feel those feelings that they will just, they will just go forward in life like having all that negativity and things that don't serve them and, and hold them back in their lives mm. because they just, they're afraid to feel. Right. The, the great thing about hypnotherapy is, um, at, at least in my practice, and, and not all hypnotherapists do this, but what we do is we, we really do work to understand what are your goals in your life, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to be afraid of with regards to hypnotherapy because you and I are going to get to know each other really well. We're going to understand what are the issues you're dealing with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then hypnotherapy in turn um, is really um, uh, me guiding you and you're doing the work. And if I if I'm working to take you back to the root cause of whatever's holding you back, you may feel those feelings for, for a, a little amount of time. But what I do is I continue to circle you back to those feelings and eliminate them. Mm -hmm. So you still have the memory, but you don't have all the emotional baggage and the barriers and everything that has sort of um, created this, uh, the issues that you're dealing with today. Mm -hmm. So yes, people do not, not want to feel their feelings, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, if you're if you really are, you know, you have faith that you want to feel better, right. feel better in your life, be happier, live more abundantly, um, be more confident. People usually when they decide that they're ready, mm -hmm. then then they're ready to, you know, sort of go and explore and feel those feelings. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you had specifically referenced clinical in terms of your description of hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that because mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know that when people hear the term hypnotherapy, hypnosis, mm -hmm. that they understand that it's a clinical discipline. I think, in many instances, people think it's, quote, some new age hoo-ha that they aren't <laughs> supposed to buy into. Talk about the clinical nature of it. Right. That's a great question. I, you know, Clinical hypnotherapy is is mental therapy, mm -hmm. right? So you can think of me as a, I, you know, I'm certified um, in this practice, and so like a, you know, 
it, not I don't want to compare myself to a psychiatrist sure. or a psychologist because their their practice and studies are completely different. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm a practitioner, so if you're coming to me, then my my job is to help guide you um, towards well-being mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so that you know it, it's almost like if you you know if you have horrible pain <laughs> in your side and you take yourself to the hospital because it's so severe and you don't know what to do they're, they're what they're going to do is they're going to figure out the source of that pain and they're going to eliminate it mm-hmm. same thing in hypnotherapy my job is to work with you to figure out what is the root cause that's of what's holding you back or creating these issues in your life mm-hmm. we're going to we're going to get to it we're going to eliminate it we're going to move you forward and, and are you not feeling and experiencing that pain anymore and you had a pivotal moment because you now are a practitioner. You are now an actual therapist. But you came to it as a result of using hypnotherapy yourself. How did that impact on your life? It Make- was an, inc- an incredible... Yeah, yeah, right. I'm yeah. sorry to... No, no, no. To go right ahead. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, I had many things happening sort of... At- that, that led me to where I am today. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. basically, um, well, starting, you know, I, I was in corporate communications for right. almost 25 years. Right. And I would say for the past 10 years of that, I was not happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like really unhappy. Like mm-hmm. I'm not, lo- I'm just wasn't feeling it and not loving the profession. But at the same time, what I thought in my mind was I- I'm lucky to have a job. Mm-hmm. You know, it pays well. I'm, I'm, you know, obviously I've been doing it a long time. Right. I'm good at it. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't filling me up. And mm-hmm. and then from there, um, you know, I was afraid, like, I don't know how to move forward. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm no, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Like how do I, <laughs> how do I leave a profession that I've been in for 25 years and start mm-hmm. over? Like, is that even possible? Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, um, both of my parents passed away. So my dad passed away in 2018. That was expected. He had dementia and COPD. And my mom passed away in 2019 in December, completely unexpected, which just, mm. you know, blew me away. And when you go through that kind of transformative experience, it, it gives you a different perspective. It, there's a lot of, you know, you're asking, or at least for me, I was asking myself, what is it all about? Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not okay. It's not good enough. Like I want to be fulfilled in my life. Like mm. I want to, I want to help people and, and, um, and spend my life making people's lives better. How do mm-hmm. I do that? So mm-hmm. those things coming together, uh, prompted me to seek out a hypnotherapist because mm-hmm. I needed help, you know, mm-hmm. because I was holding myself back and I had held myself back for so long and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to move forward. How did you come to the conclusion that you would seek hypnotherapy though, versus going through the I guess, mm-hmm. perceptibly more conventional routes that people often go to. How did you get there? Well, I actually, I worked with a coach mm-hmm. and um, while I was on the journey, you okay. know, trying to figure myself out mm-hmm. because I was like, oh, I'll hire a higher coach. This mm-hmm. is, she helps, you know, people sort of pivot in their lives mm-hmm. and I'll, cause I need someone to help me get there. Mm-hmm. And as part of the, the, the journey, so to speak, the work that I did, a lot of it was intrinsic. Like what fills me up? What, what motivates me? What will I, what will I want to take in? What will I not tolerate mm-hmm. anymore? That kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. I started to research, um, different types of professions with regards to helping others. Mm-hmm. And I landed on hypnotherapy as part of that. But I, I wasn't going to move forward mm-hmm. until I actually understood what it was about. Sure. So that's what that's what really prompted me to reach out to a hypnotherapist mm-hmm. um, and work with her. And, you know, and she she literally, you know, I told her everything and all the fear that I was facing, what I was trying to do with my life. And, you know, we dug in there and then she designed sessions to help me get over, you know, to identify what was holding me back. Mm-hmm what my limiting beliefs were, what, you know, what caused them and then move me forward, Mm -hmm. eliminating those, you know, Mm -hmm. moving forward, me forward in a much stronger um, mindset to be able to have the confidence to make the change. Mm -hmm. So once I did that, and I also, you know, it's just informationally reached out to hypnotherapists to talk to them about the practice and what it's meant to them and, Mm -hmm. you know, just get the feel for it. Um, And it was those things that really, move me forward in my life and mm. so that's what that's what it was a journey you know mm-hmm. to get there but yeah. that that is how i landed on hypnotherapy so when you got there kim did you walk in the door so to speak mm-hmm. having chosen to 
be given treatment, to be given support through hypnotherapy with your own ideas that you found were completely inaccurate? And if so, what were those? <laughs> yes, because I, I also had kind of the Hollywood mm. idea of hypnosis. Like, I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, will I not control my thoughts? Will I, right. like, you know, I don't understand really what is, will mm -hmm. this really help me? Right, in any, right. Like, how, is this hooey? You know, really, <laughs> like, I didn't know what to think about it, you know? Right. Um, I had no preconceived notion with regards to what the experience would be because I just hadn't, I hadn't ever seen it done in such a way that was, you know, authentic, so to mm -hmm. speak. So I kind I did go in with an open mind, but I will tell you that I was skeptical because right. I just, you know, because it is, I don't think of it as new age, but it is one of those therapies that people are less than familiar with. Mm -hmm. And your first so, personal it, breakthrough though, let me ask you this. Yeah. Once you got in there and you were able to get into that groove, I'm, that's what I'm going to call it, a groove. Yeah. And you had your own first personal breakthrough as a result of hypnotherapy. What did that feel like? Oh my gosh. It was, I was so shocked by it because you mm. know, you, when, when a, when a hypnotherapist tells you they're going to get you to the root mm -hmm. cause, the mm -hmm. first memory, the most significant memory you have of what your limiting belief is. So mm -hmm. for me, it was, I'm not enough. Mm. You think to yourself, well, how will I even know that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because consciously you don't know it. You can't identify it. It doesn't exist in your conscious mind, but your subconscious mind, you, the question comes to you and boom, mm -hmm. it's like that. You go mm -hmm. right to it. Mm -hmm. I was so shocked by not only the fact that I, that it, I went right to it and, and, and what it was. And I was, you know, it was not, not something that had ever occurred to me that mm -hmm. I even remembered. Mm -hmm. So it was just, I think it was such a, such an amazing experience and then what's what's amazing about it for me was you know because as a child when you go through trauma you just don't have the mental capacity to be, to be able to cope in such a way that is going to serve you for the rest of your life right mm -hmm. you do the best you can with what you have as a child so when you go through hypnotherapy and you identify that that moment and you eliminate the you know all of the you know the emotions and um, the barriers and everything you've set up you can look at, at that that moment at through your adult eyes mm -hmm. and you don't and your emotions from it are gone they're eliminated so you're it's very it's very interesting because you just have an entirely new perspective right and you can identify and connect the dots with regards to all the patterns in your life mm -hmm. like everything that you know all the barriers and the fears and all of it you can see it connecting the dots across your life and mm -hmm. it is just it is it's an amazing experience it really is i love that you have said it that way because I, first of all, I love the term journey to apply to life. I, you just have to. It's all a journey. And the revelation of what you have dealt with and the impact it has on you in the now is that a, something a lot of people just tend to overlook. And we think of things in very finite ways, right? We want to put them all into individual boxes and saying, well, this is how I deal with this and this is how I deal with that. But one of the things I mentioned in my intro was that, you know, Dr. Andrew Weil, who is very well known, mentions the fact that hypnotherapy literally has an impact and potential to treat and deal with anything, no matter what it is. And I think that when we're looking at this, that's the essential question most people say that they would have. Well, why would I go to get hyp hypnotherapy? What is it going to help me with? And earlier on, you had listed a lot of different things. But let's talk now a little bit about those individual possibilities in terms of what people could come to a hypnotherapist for. And then give me a little insight into, depending upon the nature of the person, on that first session, during that first session, how would you get at what it is that they really need? That's an excellent question. So, and, and I do want to, I do want to, before we move forward, yeah. I want to say, when I say trauma, mm -hmm. people think you have to have something horribly significant have happened right. to you to, to give you, you know, mm -hmm. to, to have created, um, uh, the emotions or the limitations in your life that have carried you throughout your adulthood, mm -hmm. but that's not true. It's right. not always trauma, right. right? It's, it, it, it doesn't, you know, it can be like there, there's a person I worked with who, um, you know, she was four years old mm -hmm. and her baby sister was born and she wanted to be with her mom, the mm -hmm. four year old. She wanted to be with her mom. She missed her mom and her dad 
you know, wanted to get, let the mom get some rest and be with the baby. And mm-hmm. so her dad was like, no, don't, you know, don't bother your mother. Don't go into your mother. And so that from right there set up for her a, 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 a mindset where she didn't feel lovable uh, I got for you. her entire life. Mm-hmm. And so it's not, you know, and, and there was no, you know, there's no malice or intention mm-hmm. behind that, that mm-hmm. actual, you know, interaction with she and her dad. But that is what a child's mind mm-hmm. will do. Exactly. You know, that is what they think. It's because you're mm-hmm. a child, right? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to put that out there. Sure. Regards. It sure. doesn't have to be trauma. Right. It's just, it's, it's whatever happened that has impacted us and, um, made us, you know, um, create these emotional um, mm-hmm. uh, beliefs about ourselves that limit us, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So people come to see me for a, a variety of things. I've, I've worked a lot with with people who feel stuck. Mm. They're stuck in their lives. Um, some have gone through divorce or are going through divorce, um, and they want. Um, I've, I've dealt with people, or I'm working with people who are. Um, they want to make a change in their lives and they don't know how mm-hmm. and they don't know what they want to do. So there's a lot of that people feeling very stuck. And I do think with the pandemic and everything that's gone on, people have really thought about right. their life in a different way. Like, am I doing what I want to do? Mm-hmm. But but not knowing, like, what would that be? You know, mm-hmm. so there's been a lot of that. And, and you know, we hold ourselves back, like I said. And, and so really what I, I do is I, I work with that person. So, Charles, if you wanted to do something, but you just you you just didn't know what it was or you felt stuck or you didn't have the confidence or whatever, it may be, you would come to me and we would really dig in. But be like mm-hmm. I would ask you a lot of questions um, if we decided from that that hypnotherapy was the right way to go for you that you could benefit then i provide you with a questionnaire Mm -hmm. um even though we've had an in-depth talk i really want to understand more so Mm -hmm. the more i know the better off i am with regards to creating a session Mm -hmm. that's going to get you to your goal Mm -hmm. right right so then from there um you would come for your first session we would have a really good in-depth pre-talk I, and then I would take you through a hypnotherapy session, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So uh, whatever it is that we're, we're dealing with, uh, whatever your goal is and whatever your, your mindset is, that's, that would guide our session. And mm-hmm. I ask people to commit to three sessions as a minimum mm-hmm. because, you know, hypnotherapy is, is amazingly transformative, but mm-hmm. you can't <laughs> do everything. <laughs> it's not session. an overnight act, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you need, you need to have some momentum there and work, you know, so it's, for me, it's really more of a mm-hmm. three-step process. It's digging in, mm-hmm. understanding what, what it is, what you're going through. You know, everyone has their own strength. Mm-hmm. Everyone has strength, but that, that we also have, things that we can heal from. Right. They also have hurt. Mm-hmm. So it's really, you know, working with the strengths you have, but also dealing with the hurt, right? right. Helping you move forward. Right. So then the, you know, secondly, getting to that root cause, eliminating those, you know, the, the thoughts and emotions and beliefs that don't serve you. And then mm-hmm. moving you forward in a way that allows you to deal with whatever comes at you in mm-hmm. life in a much more profoundly positive way. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, I know that a foundation of your practice based upon the information you've shared with me is trust. And I know that you begin there. However, how do you get a client to come into the door, three sessions, 20 sessions, whatever the case may be, how does that effort to get them to establish trust and be authentic and forthcoming so that you can help them happen? Really, if if someone's reaching out to me, Mm-hmm. They've decided that they're ready. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're there. They're halfway there okay. with regards to wanting to heal. Mm-hmm. So there, you know, there is that. It kind of start, does start with a person like mm-hmm. that. I'm ready to do something mm-hmm. to help myself. There's that perspective, and then and then it really is, you know, the conversation and the connection between myself and the, and the potential client, mm-hmm. um, and establishing trust quickly. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm just very authentic and right. transparent mm-hmm. and. Um, and the questions, the questions that I ask are very, um, they're not threatening anyway, but they're mm-hmm. very, you know, they really do make you think maybe a little bit differently than what you mm-hmm. thought before. So I might ask you a question that is, okay, Charles, you're, you're telling me about your problem, right? You've told me what it is. Mm-hmm. I might ask you to close your mind and tell me where in your body do you feel that 
do you feel it? Okay. Because it gets you out of your head mm-hmm. and connects you to your body. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a very interesting shift to understand where people hold their pain because mm-hmm. there is a mind-body connection. So, for instance, Charles, if you had all your pain like in between your shoulder blades of your back, mm-hmm. that is a responsibility syndrome. Mm-hmm. So you take on the responsibility of everyone in your life. You take it mm-hmm. on. Um, you might be a perfectionist. You might go ahead and do the job because you know what, no one else is going to do it better. Mm. You might parent in that way mm-hmm. where you, you resent your partner and you mm-hmm. feel like you have to do everything, but it's actually you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're taking all of that on. That's mm-hmm. about you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about anything else. Right. So there is a really interesting uh, mind body connection with folks and getting people to think about their pain or their emotional pain in that way. Um, is very telling and it, and it, and it also, you know, creates greater trust because Mm -hmm. they're, you know, you're, you're, you're guiding that person to really feel Mm -hmm. the feelings that perhaps Mm -hmm. they're afraid to feel. I love that you introduced the mind body connection thing here. Mm -hmm. I find a real parallel between the, I mean, yours is clinical hypnotherapy. I understand, but like when a person goes to a personal trainer for physical things and they're convinced that they can't push through to get it done. And a lot of people find that there becomes this kind of push and pull syndrome that happens because the trainer is saying, you can do it. Just go ahead and do this. And they're like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. How does that apply to your practice? Because I'm sure, without you giving away too much about anyone in particular, obviously, that that push and pull occurs. How do you get people to make that connection so that they realize what they are capable of because they have literally got an inner saboteur that makes Mm -hmm. them believe that they cannot. Right. It's interesting. The the words I can't Mm -hmm. or I don't Mm -hmm. are really, I don't want to. Exactly. (laughs) Because they don't want to feel their feelings. Right, right, exactly. (laughs) So whatever it is is blocking you in your head that Mm -hmm. the I can't is is I don't want to feel like I don't want to feel this. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what's going on. So when I ask people, you know, how committed are you to really reaching your goals or Mm -hmm. how does it feel when X? Mm -hmm. How does it feel when Y? And people say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'll say to them, I don't know means you don't want to feel. Exactly. And so you have to kind of call people out because, right. you know, you, you. I mean, people, even though they're there and you know that they, they really do want to help themselves, they're obviously they're talking with you. They, they are, you know, um, they are motivated, but at the same time, they're holding on to their problems mm-hmm. so closely because mm-hmm. it's part of them. You know, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a part of them that right. they might not, not even be aware of. They're holding themselves back, but they don't, they're not aware of it. So let's talk about the other end of the spectrum. And I'm it's a personal irritant for me, <laughs> just so you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the other end of the spectrum, you have people who, and, and this is my phrasing, I would say they feel too much. One thing that's been very clear about this whole period of this pandemic of these past two years is that there are some people who don't necessarily do much else but feel. Oh, my gosh. It's everything. It, when you're asking someone something, and this is my example, and you really want to know what they think, and the sentence begins with, well, I feel that. I'm like, oh, good Lord. (laughs) Like, I didn't ask you what you felt. I asked you what you thought. So do you encounter that as well? A person who walks in and everything is raw feeling and emotion, and they haven't thought about what that means because there are causes of that as well. How is that something that you address? It's it's really not that different, even though okay. they're feeling their feelings and they're wearing it on their sleeve, right. so to speak, and the, and and perhaps you know, because that's however that is for that mm-hmm. person, that's serving them. Mm-hmm. However, when they're you know when they go straight to their feelings for whatever reason, that is serving that is serving them. So mm-hmm. perhaps they um, feel uh, they are, uh, you know, perhaps that's a way that they feel that they're showing their their worth Mm. right like Mm -hmm. you know there's three basic things Mm -hmm. with people right Mm -hmm. there's the the limiting beliefs are i'm not enough right (laughs) i'm not lovable Mm -hmm. this isn't available to me Mm -hmm. right so Mm -hmm. if you have someone that's just all emotions all the time that's coming from a place of needing to be sort of um 
confirmed mm -hmm. by the other person. So mm -hmm. to speak, I am enough. I, mm -hmm. I'm proving to you that I'm enough because I'm emotional and mm -hmm. I'm putting myself out there and I'm giving you all my feelings. Mm -hmm. Please take what I'm giving you because I need the validation mm -hmm. in my life because okay. this is how I thrive because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know any other way. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah, sense? yeah, it does make sense. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper here okay. because I want to get to the question of people who the book that I have been talking about is one called, you know, um, what happened to you. And that's that book that's got to do with the nature of trauma. So I'm so glad that you explained that everything can have a traumatic effect, although it may not be bloodletting trauma, so to speak. Right. But a lot of people you know, will run into a corner where when things happen in life, they are never at the core of it. It's always someone else. So they feel like they are always the one who is put up on. And I don't know exactly where that emanates from. But every time something happens, as opposed to looking to a solution within themselves, they're looking outwardly and assigning the accountability, responsibility, or blame to others. In hypnotherapy, getting to the core of what's behind that, is that a different approach or not? Not really, okay. because there's a root cause behind everything. Right, right. So it, it really, you know, whatever, whatever the problem may be, mm -hmm. it started somewhere. Mm. And from that, that, from that initial, um, from that initial point, mm -hmm. that person has spent a lifetime mm -hmm. building that up. Right. So basically when, when they started with whatever it was that happened that made them feel uh, no matter what I do, nothing is good enough or right. whatever it may be. They, you, you, if nothing I do is good enough, then, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be reacting and acting in a, a completely, you know, in a way that doesn't serve you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. you don't know any better. And mm -hmm. it's the same for any person, mm -hmm. you know, it, we build up our own coping mechanisms mm -hmm. and our own, you know, our behaviors coming from our emotions. So it really just, there's no difference with regards to how I would necessarily approach, mm -hmm. but I uh, really, for me, it would be, I've got to understand what your, what are your issues? And right. sometimes people don't know their issues. Right. Sometimes right. they don't have the introspection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like they don't, maybe the person you're talking to doesn't know right. that they go, that they're emotional and mm -hmm. that, you know, they're, they're putting them, you know, their feelings out all the time and not necessarily taking responsibility for mm -hmm. their their, um, you know, uh, own involvement mm -hmm, in that, mm -hmm. but you know, you do get, get them to it. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you do get, you do because it, you have to just, you have to ask a lot of questions to right. get there. Um, yeah. To get them there. Yeah. I live in Los Angeles, <laughs> which of course, therapies of all kinds <laughs> are certainly prevailing here. Now, a lot of people, you know, say it as kind of a badge of honor or because it's the thing to do. I happen to believe that therapy is essential, whether it is therapy with someone who is working with you. I've done my, I tell a lot of people, I say, well, I've written three books because that was my therapy. <laughs> I got it all out <laughs> and did it. But I also believe in tapping into resources like you and others to help do that. Now, the thing about therapy is I think sometimes people believe that there is a starting point and an ending point. I, on the other hand, because we are evolving creatures, believe that if there are things that you're dealing with that you need help with, that you begin and you continue. Because it's like when I'm talking to married couples and one is upset because they're saying, well, you know, this is usually with women that I know, but I've had a number of guys who are married as well who say, it. well, you know, they're not who I marry. And I was like, are you a fool? <laughs> Of course they're not. You all have been married for 25 years. Everybody changes. And part of the sign-on is that you have to accept them as they become, not just as they are. So my question to you about that in terms of therapy and the length of it, I would think that if you're working with someone, as long as you're both here, physically and alive, that you would continue to do that because you're going to consistently evolve over time. And those challenges, those things in your past are going to have different meaning at different points in life. Am I accurate in that or how do you see it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I do believe that, you know, I think talking therapy is amazing, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think the main thing for, for anyone out there who 
wants to be happier or healthier mentally, Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage anyone to Mm -hmm. get whatever it is, just Mm -hmm. get the help that you need. There's no, you know, just do it. Mm -hmm. Some people like the talk therapy, you know, it Mm -hmm. is a commitment, you know, Mm -hmm. you're going, you're unraveling it, right? Mm -hmm. You're unraveling Mm -hmm. it back. But with hypnotherapy, it, this is a very, it's a very brief and very transformative Mm. type of therapy. Mm -hmm. So, because we're going, we're not trying to figure out the issue and, 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 you know, going from start A to start B to start C to Z, Mm -hmm. we are literally going in, Mm -hmm. boom, we're identifying what it is and we're getting rid of it Mm -hmm. and we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. I mean that, so it's a different, you know, really it, it, any type of therapy, in my opinion, because I don't think that we're born with the tools to know how to to navigate right. life. Right. I think that we have to be open to learning and be open to, um, you know, I, I'm always learning. I'm always reading. Yeah. I'm always talking to people because that that fills me up. And I feel like there's you can't ever know enough. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, I think that whatever you decide with regards to therapy, um, whatever modality it is. It just, it has to be based on what works for you. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. It does greatly. And, you know, it makes me think of the old Tony Bennett quote that if you live long enough, life teaches you how to live it. And I think there's a great deal of truth to that. And when you're getting that level of support as well by learning who you are, my journey personally has been, I know exactly who I've been. I know exactly who I am. What's intriguing to me is who I'm going to become because I don't know that yet, right? But I'm open to finding out. My next question, Kim, is as we're looking at this, the key to something you mentioned earlier was about the subconscious mind Mm -hmm. and being able to tap into it and access it. And while a lot of people, of course, are very much comfortable living in the conscious reality that we're living Mm -hmm. into, I think that there's a fear of the unknown. My mama used to say, what's done in dark soon comes to light, right? (laughs) So not only do you have to be willing to and I hate the fact that people use the word demons to assign to it, but, you know, find out what your demons are. But you have to be willing to open up to allow that access to your therapist. When that happens and you have that really good moment where you are able to make that connection, what is it that you have found that people have been most compelled by when they are able to actually allow the access for themselves and allow you to come in with them to identify what it means. You know, it's it's really an interesting process because when you take someone to the root cause of mm-hmm. what's holding them back in their mm-hmm. lives, mm-hmm. it's never what they think it is. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really rarely because you're just complete. You don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. You're not consciously aware of what it could mm-hmm. be. So having someone go through that, go through that. Mm-hmm. And I actually identify it and then eliminate those emotions and then, you know, come, you know, if you, I hate to say come out of hypnosis, but you know, you're, you're coming from the subconscious back to consciousness. Mm -hmm. Um, It is very profound, Mm -hmm. you know, to, to watch someone go, uh, wow, you know, wow. Okay. You know, I had. I didn't know that that's what it was, Mm -hmm. you know, that that would be what it is. Mm -hmm. And, and then you'll sit there and you'll watch them start to connect the dots, like, because they, now they know, like, and and then you can think, oh my gosh, I did, you know, I never put myself first in my marriage because of X or I, I've, you know, I, I always have felt that someone has to lose for me to put myself first or, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You actually see them looking at their history and, and understanding what, what mm-hmm. they, honestly, what they've done right, to right. not serve themselves and mm-hmm. not allow themselves to be really authentic, mm-hmm. their authentic self, mm-hmm. um, that they've held themselves back and weren't even aware, like did, didn't have any idea. So that is a, a really profound mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. And then it allows you, you know, people move forward from hypnotherapy and, and, you know, they're always able to think about it in that way, in that adult way. Like, oh, look at that. And and it, it also, you know, because we, you know, we move them forward conscious, you know, in their subconscious, not, they're not going to behave in, in the same way right. anymore. Right. right. Hopefully. So there, it's, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So it is, it is a completely different, you're, you're dealing with a person that came in to see you hmm. session one or, you know, to the 
person that's leaving in session three, if you're doing three sessions, they are different. Mm -hmm. They are completely different yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. You can see the lightness mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. You can see the confidence and the abundance and it is it is really it is amazing yeah, it's amazing yeah yeah i can i can understand that having had my own individual breakthroughs i mean there are moments when you come to the realization of what it is that you've got a face full of tears because you're just like oh my god i never knew that that's yeah. what that's about that's what that's about yeah, yeah yeah now one thing i've noticed and i want to talk about this because it's important you, of course, would be a hypnotherapist who would treat anyone, but you do have a particular interest in women. And I'd like to think that, and I'm not saying this for any other reason than it, it's what I believe, there are unique challenges being a woman and living up to the expectations or dealing with the ideas about what womanhood is that even though I love women and many of my friends women I will never comprehend because those are not things that I deal with talk to me about the practice area where this is a focus of yours and why mm -hmm. absolutely uh, you know I decided you know when hypnotherapy is a big world right, right? like like I said because I can tr I can really work with someone mm -hmm. with almost any condition exactly anything it, it is like mm -hmm. if you've got x y and z let's talk right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, you, you want to get sort of into a niche or uh, mm -hmm. an area of expertise that speaks to you. Right. So I, I do work with men and women, mm -hmm. and I do focus specifically on women mm -hmm. who are struggling, mm -hmm. you know, um, who are maybe feeling lost or holding themselves back or whatever it may be, because I was one of those women. Yeah. Right. So for me, I, I'm sort of like, I, that has been my journey. My, and I spent, you know, a, a long, long time mm -hmm. in a mindset that didn't serve me mm -hmm. and was too afraid to do anything about it and didn't know how to. So mm -hmm. that's why really specifically, I wanted to focus on women um, and also because, you know, as a, a woman in her fifties, I, um, I've seen so many women in so many stages of their lives, mm. um, sort of dealing with things right. in a way that doesn't set them up for mm -hmm. happiness and abundance. Mm -hmm. So I can recognize it. So mm -hmm. those are really the reasons yeah. why I wanted to focus more mm -hmm. on women because I'm a woman and I've, I've sort of, you know, not my first rodeo, right? right. So I've, I've sort of been on that journey and, and it allows me to really have a, a, a um, you know, just a, an understanding sure. of, of what it's all about. But, you know, uh, men are, are uh, amazing as well. And, you know, it's not, there's not really a lot of difference with regards to how you hypnotize mm -hmm. someone. It's really interesting. Male, female, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It, there are emotional people and there are analytical people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. And that is what really impacts how you hypnotize someone mm -hmm. more than what gender they yeah, are. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're analytical, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to right. tell your mind why you want to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, like that you're going to do this mm -hmm. because it's going to X. Yeah. You know, I, it, there's always has to be a because. Mm -hmm. I have to explain it. Mm -hmm. Whereas an emotional person is much more into, you know, you're, right. it's, you know, you're able to get them into more of a visualization, visualization, mm -hmm. um, not quicker, but it's just analytical people tend to really just need the proof. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they yeah. want the proof. Yeah. So it's just, you know, male or female that the only difference is really analytical, emotional and yeah. how you yeah. go about it. Yeah, I get that. And I, I'll tell you, though, I applaud the fact that that is a focus area because, you know, there is there is a tendency for people to forget. In this society, across so many different spectrums what women are expected to put up with. <laughs> I just, I mean, I, and, and, and it's, it's not, you know, so, soliciting people to say, oh, he's, you know, pro women. It's just, I've seen it. And there are just distinct differences and people tend to forget that. And whether it's, you know, prescribed roles, uh, you mentioned, you know, age here, 
you know, well, if you're a woman at a certain age versus a man at a certain age, you know, well, you were supposed to have done this. It's crazy. So I can totally get that. But there are always the, you know, important values of having those niches where you can understand things inherently that someone else may not be able to. So I'm actually applauding that because when I started seeing your post and some of the questions that you posed, I was like, hallelujah. She, she's out here letting people know, letting women know in particular. But any guy who's looking at it, maybe making him think for the first time, well, I never thought about that. That's important work. And I don't know, you know, given that you do have a background in PR and communications, is that's part of what you understood would be part of your marketing plan. But I'm here to tell you it's very effective because it is going to have either of those scenarios in place. Women asking themselves the question for the first time and perhaps men looking at it and saying, I never thought that was something that women would need to think about, and maybe I need to think about it too. So I'm actually going to give you some real applause for that, Kim, because oh, thank you. I appreciate that. looking into the world today, you know, there is a major shift here, and a lot of people don't necessarily like it. A lot of women are taking up and taking over and taking control, and I'm digging it. <laughs> so I'm like, whatever tools that are necessary to help that continuation occur, I'm all for it. Now, that said, I want to get to this idea of, well, my therapist knows everything about me and the good, the bad, the ugly, and in between, because some people don't seek out therapy because of that. They don't want anyone else knowing what is, I guess, in their minds, their dirty laundry or their secrets. Let's go back to talk about the trust factor again, because that's very important. Everyone who is a therapist is not going to practice the same way, not going to have the same you know, um, expectations. But let's just talk about you, because the reason I have found your information and your post and your approach so compelling is that it is really clear that you begin from that level of trust. But when we're looking at someone who's going to come in as a potential client, this idea that you know everything about me, it is the same level of restraint that you practice as any therapist would practice, which is this information is confidential. It's not going anywhere. It's not like you're going to write a tell-all and say, my client's the real story. Talk to me about that and why it's important for people who are considering therapy to let go of that barrier so that they can get help. Because if the only reason that they're not doing it is because they fear the revelation of who they are is something that they don't want you or anyone else to know, how do they get over that hurdle so that they can make the decision to come and see you? How do they do that? That's an excellent question. You know, yes, obviously it's confidential. Right. You know, anything that it, a client is, whatever they tell me is, you know, their own. Mm -hmm. It's theirs. Um, there's just, you know, any therapist I would hope you know, my job isn't to judge you. Right. Like that's not my job is to help help guide you mm -hmm. to let go of, of whatever it may be that is making you and causing your issues today. Mm -hmm. So you know, telling me whatever it is um, that you've done or you're doing or you're experiencing, that's just going to help me mm -hmm. because the more the more I know, the the better off I'll be with regards to how we're going to get to what it really is that is preventing you from living your best life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people, my hope would be if anyone's out there and they might be embarrassed for the way they do X, Y, or Z, that's really not what it's all about. It's why you're doing the X, Y, Z, not the not the actions itself, but the, the emotion, the emotions behind it, the feelings of what's causing it. Like, mm -hmm. let's get to that. So mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, my concern is not judging. Mm -hmm. My concern is understanding and helping mm -hmm. guide mm -hmm. to, you know, to the transformation and positivity that, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it is that your goal is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you do have to, I guess, get over um, your own fear because it's fear holding right. you back and 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 take the step you know you have to take action you mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. you have to do it you can't just you know continuing and pushing things down it just leads to more pain mm -hmm. because it manifests itself in every part of your life mm -hmm. so you just sort of have to get over any embarrassment yeah and be and be able to really want to 
be happier in your life, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. that that's worth a conversation, right. certainly. Right. <laughs> it's a psychological and emotional perspective that is akin to going to the doctor and the first thing they say is now strip. <laughs> right Yay. yeah no. take it all off we're going to begin <laughs> with everything fresh and clear i think that's worse <laughs> oh, hey. trust me i know <laughs> as i get older it's like certain cases you go to the doctor and there are these things as we all know that we have to do and i'm like really today I, is this necessary yeah. in life but it is so you do what you have to do so <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, the process as we get ready to, you know, start moving toward closing here. You know, I had alluded to in my intro the fact that some people, you know, assume when you're talking hypnotherapy, you know, the watch being pendulumed in front of your face or, you know, some people use a metronome or whatever the case. It is not unusual that people may use tools to help you get into that state, right? And now I meditate you know, in the mornings mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm about to, you know, smack the taste out of somebody's mouth. So we all have <laughs> the tools that we use, but in individual sessions, individual mm -hmm. therapists, there may be those types of tools that are used to get you there, correct? Well, I, you know, I think it depends on the hypnotherapist. For mm -hmm. me, the most important tool I have is my voice ah. because that, that is, that mm -hmm. is what you're listening to. Mm -hmm. And that is what's guiding you. Mm -hmm. I'm guiding you. So my voice is the most important thing in, in the session. That's great. And, and so because it is a guided, it is, it is a guided, um, transformative experience. So mm -hmm. listening to what I'm, I'm saying is, is by far the most important thing. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I, there's no tools that I would use. I mean, I know some hypnotherapists like right. music, calming music. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, s some might, uh, you know, use the sound of a clock is right. just, you know, it's just it, whatever it may be. But normally for at least for my practice, I'm just asking you to listen to me. I love the idea of the voice because yeah, other stuff kind of gets on my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> when, when I'm meditating, I can't have any sound because it distracts me. So yeah. I need to center and I can't center because I'm just like, there's that sound again. I can't deal with it. So I love the fact that you're saying voice because the modulation, the tone, that all goes to my being able to recenter. And that's a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because it is supposed to be a very mm -hmm. relaxing mm -hmm. um, experience. Mm -hmm. So you and I are talking and I'm animating, you're mm -hmm. animated. But in, mm -hmm. in hypnotherapy, I'm not animated. Right. Like I am, I, my voice is going to be monotone mm -hmm. um, because I, I want you to react just to the ongoing sound of my voice and whatever it is mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be emotionally giving you any ups mm -hmm. and downs mm -hmm. you're just listening to the sound of my voice mm -hmm. and i'm telling you mm -hmm. i'm guiding you so it's that kind of thing it's sort right. of just you know the what i can do to to make sure you're just relaxing mm -hmm. and listening to everything mm -hmm. i say mm -hmm. as i make you relax more and more and it is a very intimate process and that's not to freak anyone out who's listening it's not <laughs> that kind of intimate but it's intimate in the fact that you're really going into yourself and that mm -hmm. is the most intimate space of all. And is that fair to say? It is fair to say. Mm -hmm. It is. So, I mean, there, as far as, you know, I mean, I'm doing all of my hypnotherapy on Zoom now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because of the pandemic. Right. And right. it's extraordinarily effective. Mm -hmm. But it is intimate in the fact that, yes, number one, you're trusting me to guide you. Mm -hmm. And number two, you are going into and centering yourself into your mind mm -hmm. and you are being guided. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so yeah, it, it is intimate with regards to just allowing yourself um, to relax to that point where you're going to actually benefit from mm -hmm. the process. Gotcha, gotcha. And I, this is my question as we move to wrap up here. We've talked about so much about what hypnotherapy is, what a hypnotherapist does. Summarize, and, and don't feel any pressure here because this is just a conversation. Talk about what hypnotherapy is not in terms of oh. what people are going to come to. Because, you know, that's the thing. We now know a lot about what it is. But what isn't it? Okay. Hypnotherapy is not mind control, mm. Mm. right? Because the person who is being hypnotized is actually in control. Mm -hmm. You never lose control mm -hmm. when you're in, in, when you're in a, a hypnotherapy session. You're hearing what I say. You're aware of what I'm saying. If mm. I said something to you that went against something anything right you, you would have the wherewithal to mm -hmm. 
say no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's a misunderstanding. It is not mind control. You're mm-hmm. always in control. Mm-hmm. You are being guided. Mm-hmm. I am your tour guide. I am mm-hmm. the tour guide yeah. to get you to a better place in your life. So right. that is really my role. Mm-hmm. Um, it is not a miracle. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there. it is not guaranteed. There mm-hmm. are no guarantees in right. life. Right. If you have cancer right. and you're having radiation and chemotherapy, you're doing all the things you can to try to get rid of that cancer. Mm-hmm. There is no guarantee. Mm-hmm. But I will say that um, if you're committed to the process, because it is a what it is, is a partnership. Right. You know, you have mm-hmm. to meet me halfway. Mm-hmm. I'm, go- I'm going to open my heart space for you. This is a very safe environment. Mm-hmm. You have to be committed to meeting me halfway for you to be able to heal. That is what it more of it is versus what it is not. Does that does no, that help? That's that's perfect. And I'm so glad you came up with those two particular points because that's exactly why I think a lot of people enter the door thinking and now that you've exploded that, they don't have that excuse anymore. <laughs> well, people are afraid. They're right. like, I don't know what this is. Like right. what I don't even know what to think about this. I told, well absolutely. It, it's an interesting thing, Kim, because it reminds me of this whole thing about this whole I guess we're in an endemic now versus pandemic, but you know, for all the people about the vaccines and stuff, and I was like, child, you go into the drugstore every day and you pick up something off a over-the-counter shelf that you take as a medicine that you know nothing about. But this, all of a sudden, you are afraid of. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> That's my reaction. Right. That's my right. reaction. Yeah. So, Kim, I'd like you to share with our um, our audience if. They want to access your services, learn more mm-hmm. about where they can access that. You know, go ahead and do a sell-in for me here because that's part of what we get the opportunity to do here as well. So tell them the best ways to do that. Sure. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so, Charles, if anyone would like to um, basically what I what is what I call is a discovery session. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to talk with me to see if hypnotherapy could be a really great fit for them, mm-hmm. then let's talk. Mm-hmm. Right. So to do that. If you go to my website, it's www.denovohypnotherapy.com, and Denovo is spelled D-E-N-O-V-O. Denovo means anew in Latin, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I was anewing my life, and that's how I landed on the on the name. So if you go to my website, you can mm-hmm. there's a, a place to schedule a discovery session, um, and all my contact information is on there. I'm also, as you know, on Facebook, um, Kim Yurkovich. And I devote my Facebook and and my social media profile to trying to ask questions that get you to think and feel your feelings and advice too. But I I want people to be able to care, take care of themselves and to stop that negative voice and, and understand the importance of what their inner dialogue can do for them in their lives. And so that's how I really, um, that's how I, go about my social media channel is to to help try to help guide people right. towards you know a better understanding of yeah. themselves so those yeah. two ways those are the best ways to yeah. to reach me and i'll make sure that when we put the post up about this that we include that information in the post as well and for those who may be listening and have been you know listening to the podcast for a while you know that we only bring authentic people on here and kim is someone who we've been in each other's orbit as i described but I read energy and I read spirit and I just kind of go for authenticity. And so in the background, I've been observing you and what you're doing, uh, not just in terms of this career that you're in now as a therapist, which I would imagine you're a damned good one. Uh, but also even before then, just the level of your energy and spirit and this notion that you are doing this because of what you've done to help yourself and now you want to share what you've learned to help others it goes directly to what i would call the kim yurkovich brand which is to be able to take what you have and to give it to others so that they can grow as well so thank you for that i really appreciate you for doing it oh well that's beautiful thank you so much i'm I'm so honored that you would say think that and and say that thank you well that's the beauty of being able to be an honest person you you know was it mark twain that says you know when you don't lie you don't have to remember what you lied about right (laughs) so (laughs) that's the truth (laughs) yeah yeah so i'm like i'm just gonna call it like i see it so kim thank you so much for joining us today this has been quite a fascinating conversation conversation. I I love everything that we've shared today. And I believe that the people out there who are listening are going to be able to gain something very valuable from it as well. So thank you again. Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Love the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Pool Proof Wisdom Podcast. We always enjoy the company. Be sure to listen, like, subscribe, and share using Google and Apple Podcasts, Audible, Spotify, Anchor, Overcast, YouTube, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate it very much if you simply tell a friend about the podcast too. Spread the word. Until next time, keep on living.